Hey everybody, I'm David from the Effects Layouts blog. I thought I'd give you guys a look at how I do perfboard. Uh, lots of different ways to approach that, but this is how I do it, and I've had good luck with it so far. Uh, today I'm going to be building the Dirty Punk Repeater that I put on the blog a while back. Uh, so first let's get started with cutting out our board. Step 1. Create the board. First you want to find the size of your board. In this case it's 12 holes tall by 14 holes wide. Now mark the size with a pencil or a marker. I use a scroll saw to cut the perf board, but you can use a hacksaw or a utility knife as well. Step 2. Tools. Before we start soldering, here's just a few tools I always like to have handy on my workbench. Soldering iron with adjustable temp. Solder. Duh, right? Hookup wire. Electrical tape. Needle nose pliers. X-Acto knife. Small wire snips. Tweezers and a digital multimeter. Step 3. Make it pretty. This is by no means necessary, but I like to use a piece of blue painter's tape to cover the face of the board. It covers up the excess holes and in my opinion makes it look a little more professional. Step 4. Flat components. I start with resistors and diodes when populating any circuit board. The reason is you end up having a more even surface when you flip the board over to solder in components. Place resistors one at a time and bend the leads to form the traces. Refer to the layout drawing and count out how many holes over and up or down they need to go. Bend any remaining lead straight away from the board and trim off. Then solder into place. This is also a good time to solder in sockets for any components you might want to replace down the road. In this case I'm socketing the delay chip, the voltage regulator, and output buffer transistor. Step 5. Standing components. Once the flat components are soldered to the board, you will probably have a lot of the traces formed. This means there will hopefully be less lead bending as you populate the capacitors. Start with the smallest caps and work towards the largest. Here I'm using ceramic caps for all values except the power filtering capacitor. As with the resistors, bend the leads as needed to complete the remaining traces. As you solder capacitor leads to resistor leads, it's not a bad idea to double check with a digital multimeter that connections have been made and you don't have any cold solder joints. Step 6. Finalizing the board. Once all the components are soldered to the board, there will probably be a few connections left to make. Here I use cutoffs from components I've already soldered onto the board, but you can also use hookup wire for this. Once all the connections have been made, use a digital multimeter to make sure there aren't any accidental jumps, shorts, or other mistakes. Step 7. Off-board wiring. Ah, wiring up pots. My favorite thing to do. One of the pots is wired as a variable resistor, so we can use another component cutoff to jumper the two legs of the time pot. Then measure and cut hookup wire and solder them to the pots first. Here I'm using 26 AWG solid core hookup wire. Once complete, solder the hookup wires to their corresponding pads on the circuit board. I like to braid or twist the hookup wire mostly for aesthetic reasons, but it's not all that necessary. Step 8. Testing. At this point you can plug into your test rig or breadboard to make sure things are working properly. Or if you're feeling lucky, you can jump straight into boxing it up. I don't recommend that, especially if you're a beginner and or working with an unverified layout. But today I have a good feeling on this one, and I'm ignoring my own advice and throwing this into a 1590B type enclosure. Step 9. Boxing. I already have my switching and jacks wired up, and it's ready to receive the board and pots. First I fix the pots to the enclosure, making sure there's enough slack with the wires from the pots to the board so I can still solder to the underside of the board as needed. Then I solder the input, output, power, and ground wires to the board. Do a few quick tests with the digital multimeter to ensure connectivity. Step 10. Play it. All that's left now is to see how it sounds through a big amp. Here I'm playing a tele through the delay directly into the normal channel on my vintage PV Classic 50 4x10. Here's my clean tone. Here's the delay set to a nice slapback setting. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is by no means the only way to do perf layouts, but it's worked well for me and hopefully it'll help you too. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and check out my Facebook and or Instagram page if that's your thing. Thanks for watching.